Now the Wyoming Senator John Barrasso, chair of the Republican Conference. Senator, thanks for joining us this morning. Let's start out with what Speaker Pelosi said about that COVID relief package. As you heard her say, she believes that more than 90 percent is going to go towards COVID relief and expressed a surprise, bemusement that Republicans couldn't go along with it. Well, to, to call this uh, COVID relief is really false advertising. Uh, only 9% of the money actually goes to defeating the virus. Only 1% of the money goes for vaccines. Uh, this is a Nancy Pelosi payoff to the liberal liberal left. This is something she's been working on a long time. So, you know, today we see her taking a victory lap to what is now known as the most progressive bill in the history of the United States, according to the White House. And the price of it shows that. You say it's a payoff to the liberal to left. I want to. We've done. I want to show the front page of the Casper Star Tribune. Coronavirus bills. We have three vaccines that are very effective. We have an. That's what President Biden has inherited: a, a, a recovering economy. So Republicans want to make sure people get shots in the arms, kids get back to school, uh, people get back to work. But we are not going to stand with the Democrats as they try to exploit a crisis to send lots of money to big cities and to uh, blue states and to really failed pension plans. This is not supposed to be a bailout. Say, it's supposed to be about helping get the disease behind us. You say blue states and big cities. I want to show the front page of the Casper Star Tribune. It shows a billion dollars going to your state of Wyoming. Yes, absolutely. And there's $350 billion going to states that... Uh, even the 22 governors, including our own governor, said that the formula they used to send this out was biased uh, and unfair, focused at California, New York, Illinois. It punished this, the states that opened earlier, and it rewarded the states that uh, stayed closed the longest. This coronavirus relief bill was not supposed to be about $1,400 checks to illegal immigrants or $1,400 checks to felons who were behind bars, wasn't supposed to be about block grants to sanctuary cities or money to schools that continue to stay closed. Look, that, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the problems with this bill. The bill is going to come due for this. And ultimately, as you just heard Nancy Pelosi say today to you, taxes are going to be next on the Democrats' agenda. So, if they, so does that mean that there's not going to be any Republican support for an infrastructure proposal or future initiatives from the Biden administration? If you can't get behind this, which is not paid for, any chance of seeing bipartisanship on infrastructure? I'd really like to see bipartisanship on infrastructure because I chaired the committee in the last Congress that passed the highway bill. We also did the, the, the water bill, the, the, all of the issues of water as well as highway infrastructure. It was bipartisan. Uh, Bernie Sanders voted for it, and so did I. We got it to the House, and what did the House do? They replaced our highway bill with the Green New Deal. So they ignored what we had done in a bipartisan way. If they would take the model that we came up with in the committee in the Senate for highway and transportation, I think that's a very good start. I talked with the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, about it. Uh, and I think that is the model in which we should move forward on transportation and infrastructure. Let's talk about the filibuster. There seems to be Democratic support coalescing around the idea of requiring the minority to do it the old-fashioned way, hold the floor by talking around the clock. What's wrong with that approach? Well, there's nothing wrong with talking. The issue is how many votes does it take to get to moving forward with legislation? Uh, you know, this coronavirus bill was done by reconciliation, which allows uh, for a majority of votes uh, to, to win the day. You know, we have a 50-50 uh, Senate. That's what the American people sent to Washington uh, with the vice president breaking the tie. You, you know, George, that ought to be a mandate to move to the middle. So we ought to do things that actually can get broad bipartisan support, like the infrastructure bill that came out of my committee last time. That's the best way to get things done. If you get things that are one vote and the vice president breaking a tie, harder for America to buy into that thing. The major pieces of legislation for our country historically have been done in a broad bipartisan way. But to be clear, you have no problem with going back to the talking filibuster? Well, I don't mind talking. I think that people ought to be able to stand and express their views. The question is, is it 50 votes or 51 or is it 60? And the current number uh, is 60. But we've had this going on now 
for over a century. And the idea is to get bipartisan buy-in to bills. If there are parts that are very partisan, they ought to be left out. Focus on the areas on which we can agree. On, on most items, I think you can agree with 80 percent of the things. So let's leave out the 20 percent, which are the hot button issues, and move the country forward on issues on which we agree. Your colleague Ron Johnson of Wisconsin has stirred up controversy with remarks about the Capitol riots and Black Lives Matters protests. I want to show them. I knew those are people that love this country, that uh, truly respect law enforcement, would never do anything to, to break a law. And so I wasn't concerned. Had the tables been turned and President Trump won the election, and those were tens of thousands of Black Lives Matter and Antifa protesters, I might have been a little concerned. I should point out that the overwhelming majority of BLM protests, more than 90 percent, were peaceful. Democrats are calling on Senator Johnson to resign. Do you agree with those comments? Should he apologize? Well, you know, you t t take a look. Of, you talk about peaceful protests. Look what's happened in uh, Portland just the other night. Uh, these, these things continue. Uh, we need to get back to a nation and a state where the, riot, the razor wire can come down, the fences can come down, people can get back to Washington uh, and the Capitol. Uh, we need to move the country forward. Uh, and that's, to me, the best way that we ought to go. So should he apologize? Well, he's going to speak for himself. You know this, George. You spent time on the Hill. Every member speaks for themselves, and I'm telling you what I believe. Senator Barrasso, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.